Hello, so today's video is about autism and schedules. A lot of this video will be more about my personal experience. I think most of my videos are just because when you have autism, it's it's so different depending on the person. A major thing of autism is that everybody who is autistic or on the spectrum has something with schedules, whether the extremity of that definitely varies. And for me personally, I find it one of probably the most debilitating things about my autism and one of the more harder things to hide or mask um, because it is such a big deal to me. Schedules and routines and patterns within them and consistency with it. And it's something that I think is overlooked. There's a fucking lawnmower going on, but I'm not going to film this any other time, so that's just going to happen. Not fun for the sensory issues, I know. But basically, schedules for me, personally, is one of the hardest things for me to mask. There's this meme, there's this Spongebob meme of Mr. Krabs, and that is such an accurate meme. I'll insert it here. This is how I feel every time there's a slight change in my schedule, a slight change in my routine, or just something got changed up on me that I wasn't aware of or I was told at last second. God damn it. Like this. Like this. For example, you probably think that I would be like, you know what? There's this annoying lawnmower in the background. I'll just film this at another time. But my routine and my schedule that I planned is I'm filming it now. So am I going to change because of this lawnmower? No, I'm still going to film it now, even with this annoying lawnmower, because this is my fucking schedule, so I'm going to fucking stick to it. So it goes a lot deeper than just, oh, I need to know what's going on when blah, blah, blah. No, I literally need to know what is happening every second of every day, and it needs to have been planned for, and nothing really can change unless it was predetermined to me. And whenever anybody brings up some kind of schedule change that might seem so minute that it won't even in your mind be a schedule change it is to me and i literally feel like this mr krabs meme like i can't even think my brain like everything blurs and i'm like i feel like i'm in this world and i almost get this like shot of like dizziness and lightheadedness and like my thoughts can't come to me concretely and i can't make any decisions or do anything because you just threw this schedule change at me and that's not what i was planning on that's not what my brain was set on and i cannot fucking deal with it and i think that my old roommate definitely saw this very extremely happen to me a lot <laughs> like um and anybody that would like live with us like if they lived in our living room or something for a month or whatever or stay with us for a week they noticed that i just was like militant with my schedules and i didn't even know that i was like to me isn't everybody i didn't realize that i was any more militant than anybody else but they literally all made a comment on how I did it. Like, I stuck to my schedule. This is kind of a little bit getting off topic, but like, I don't change my schedule for anyone or anything. I can't. I can't change my schedule unless you tell me ahead of time and I can plan my schedule change. That's when I can change my schedule. If you go, okay, so on this day, you're going to have to have a different schedule and here's this notice a week in advance and I go, okay, so then I plan very extremely for that change in that schedule and if that change in that schedule changes more, whoo, oh my God, I cannot deal with it. Like, my biggest thing with people staying with us, I was like, they can stay with us as long as they know that my routine is going to stay the same whether they're living with me or not. And that is a very selfish thing. I get it. If I normally wake up at 8 a.m. and eat immediately, I'm going to wake up at 8 a.m. and eat immediately even if they're in the living room. I'll keep the lights off and I'll try to be as quiet as I possibly can, but I can't change my schedule. And that sounds horrible. That sounds selfish. It sounds like an easy thing. But to me, it's a huge, huge deal. Like, huge. I'm just basically giving examples because I feel like that's the best way to explain it. If I go out or something, I go, okay, in my head, I go, I can go out if I know, okay, so from this time to this time, this is my going out time. And so this is the time that I have to be in that mode of going out. And then if I ever hear, hey, we're going to leave at this time, then in my head I go, okay, we're going to leave at this time. So then click, that's what's set. These are the times that I am out and I am having fun, and then this is the time that I am not anymore. And if that time is never set, then I go, okay, so from here until whenever, that's when we're having fun. Like that's what, even though it's vague, at least it's vague, so it's still set in my mind, if that makes sense. Let's say something happens and we were going out for this chunk of time, but turns out that everybody doesn't want the night to end and we're gonna go out for this longer of a chunk of time. I, ha 
I have that extreme moment of that Mr. Krabs meme of like, I was not mentally prepared for this. I was mentally prepared for going up for this chunk of time, not this chunk of time. I am not ready to handle this chunk of time. I have only been allotted in my brain a social period of this time so I cannot change it. I was already in my head planning my schedule of, okay, so I'm gonna go home, then I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna sleep. Speaking of, um, I'm somebody who it does not matter if I am drunk or whatever is going on, how late it is that I get home, I will still do my nightly routine. It's kind of iconic. I can be close to blacked out drunk and still take my makeup off and do my full skincare routine because that's my routine and it does not matter to me what's going on in my life. I'm still gonna do it. I can't go to sleep with makeup on. I legitimately can't. And I don't just take it off with a makeup wipe. I do my full like 10 step skincare routine. It's not 10 steps, but you know what I mean. Like I do every single step. I don't skip a part just because I'm drunk or just because it's late or just because of whatever. To an outside person, it's like I am not very movable with my routine and I respond to changes in my routine in a very extreme, extreme way. And to me, it's like vital to my mental health. Like the most vital thing to my mental health is having a schedule. Um, or if it does change, I can deal with changes in my schedule as long as it's not a last second change. If I have the proper allotted amount of time to prepare for this schedule change, then I can. Okay, so basically here are the steps that I need to be able to cope with any change, no matter how slight in my routine or schedule. This is what happens in my brain. And I'm gonna tell you through memes, I guess, because why not? Da 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 da, Shayna's going about her Day, somebody tells me oop you know instead of three o'clock we have to rehearse at four and it's two I go through the mr. Krabs meme of you just what I can't but I had everything in, uh, and I panic and I kind of go blank and when I'm in the moment I'm like and I kind of do like something weird and like my brain shuts down basically like I have a mini shutdown every time my schedule changes and my brain does not function and cannot cope and then what I have to do I've realized is I have to take a step back I have to legitimately remove myself from the situation so that my brain can function clearly and when I remove myself I go into this meme that's how it feels it legitimately feels like I am doing some kind of crazy mathematical equation and I go okay 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 so I input all this stuff and I figure it out and then once I figure it out I can go back and I can go okay this is it this is what's going on like usually I get to the conclusion of yes I can deal with this schedule change as long as I have that moment to take a step away and do that mathematical equation in my head and take a step forward but sometimes that's weird it sounds like it's something simple it's like great you've come up with a coping mechanism you know how to deal with it like that's so lucky most people can't even deal with it if they do that situation and so I feel very lucky that like if I do that I can usually deal with stuff but that's not usually what's socially acceptable a lot of people want a response immediately want an okay that's fine I can't do that I can't give an okay that's fine I actually don't know how that's seen all I know is that it's taken negatively and it's very strange and it makes me look Mm, a little selfish I think I don't really know because I don't know how they see me because I'm autistic so I can't tell you but it's just it's taken very negatively that I can't just be like oh okay but I I can't I can be if you just give me a second to step away from the scenario and make that decision and then I can come back and figure things out but schedules definitely rule over my life and it is probably the most restrictive part of my autism the thing that I can't hide the thing that I can't mask I never have been able to I never will be um, to me it's the most telltale sign of my autism I can hide a lot of things about it people can shrug a lot of things off to other things but that is a thing that I think really separates me obviously from uh, all other neurotypicals is that my need for routine my need for a schedule I definitely feel like a slave to my routine I think a lot of people that with autism do feel this way as well I can't be impulsive I can't be this I can't be that I heard somebody else with autism talk about this that we can do it if we are smart about it like for example if I give myself an a lot free time from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. for an example and I say okay I can do whatever I want in here then that allows me to 
do whatever I want. So you can throw whatever at me and I go, it's fine. Like, it's all good because I have this allotted free time, if that makes sense. But if I did not pre-give myself that allotted free time, I will not be able to just be thrown different things. So like, if I know I'm hanging out with my friends and I don't know what we're doing, I go, that's okay. From this time to this time, I don't know what I'm doing. So whatever I'm doing is fine. But once it hits after that time or once it's, if it's before or if that time changes or something, that's what throws me off. That's what I can't deal with because I was like, this time was the chunk that I allotted that Shayna lets go of her restraint and schedule. Another example is let's say you say, okay, Shayna, we're going to hang out um, around seven. I go, okay, so it's around seven, give or take 30 minutes. Okay, I can deal with that. It doesn't need to be exactly at seven because you said around seven. So I can give you an hour allotted time and I'm like, I'm okay. But if you say we are going to eat at seven and we don't eat at seven or you don't tell me like hey i know we were gonna eat at seven but now it's changed to eight even just telling me that information is huge even just saying hey i know that we said you were gonna eat at seven but now we're actually gonna eat at eight i go i kind of have a crabs moment and i kind of have that like mathematical mean moment but it's not that bad but what's torturous for me is saying hey we're gonna eat at seven and then seven passes and then eight passes and then nine passes. It literally like debilitates me and I can't function or do anything else until I know what time we are eating. I don't know why I'm this way. Actually I do, it's called I'm on the spectrum, but that's just how it is. Do I wish that's how I was? No. Is that really fucking annoying? Absolutely. Does it feel debilitating sometimes? 100%. But uh, I guess what I'm saying is, is that if you're neurotypical dealing with somebody who's autistic, if you just tell them and you just let us know, hey, um, I know that I said seven like an hour ago, but now it's eight. The second that you found that out, I'm, we'll have that moment, but it won't be as bad as if you just keep me hanging, dwindling, and I'm like, I wasn't aware of the time change. But we don't have much of that imagination. Uh, I think it's called like a social imagination. People mistake it for that we aren't imaginative people, and that's not what it is. Autistic people are highly imaginative imaginative but we don't have a social imagination it's hard to explain this is kind of getting onto other things but if i in my head i'm like i'm going to go here then i can't imagine anything else but going here at that specific time and i can't unhinge myself from that thought i can't think oh well i guess since instead of we're going here we're going here i can't it's very hard to explain but i guess social imagination is a whole other different topic basically consistency routine always needing to know what's going on, patterns. Like those are the key things. I look for patterns in everything. I look for patterns in my week. I'm obsessively trying to find a pattern that I can go through and go on Monday, I go here, here, and here. On Tuesday, I go here, here, and here. And if you give me those things to do, I can do it and I will do it. No matter how busy my schedule is, if I know ahead of time what those things are, I can handle it and I can tackle anything as long as you give me that pattern, as long as you give me that schedule, as long as you tell me what's going on, I can do it. I can do it all. But if you don't give me what tell me what's going on if you aren't specific with me if you just give me a vague time I can't deal with it and that's why I think a lot of autistic people might have trouble in some job settings because you're not always told what's going on when and what your schedule is and stuff so that can be very like ooh. and so from an outside perspective I think they see it as like oh they can't handle it when in reality it was just that we had the schedule and we planned for it and then you changed it but it's hard to always know what's going on and so it's something that I deal with daily and I think that anybody who's autistic deals with daily of course I wish that I could be a free flowing go with the flow person but I'm not and I'm definitely the kind of person that like if I'm hanging out with friends and we don't know what we're doing we don't have a schedule um, it drives me crazy and I don't necessarily need to be the person that makes the decision like I think people mistake a lot of times my need for schedule my routine is really just a need that like I control what's going on I do it I do but it's not that it's not that at all I don't need to make the decision on what I'm doing or what we're doing or what's going on or where we're going when like I don't need to be the person that makes that decision I really don't I just need that decision to be made and so if somebody isn't making that decision then I go well nobody's making that decision I need this decision to be made even though I don't really care, I'm going to make that decision because if I don't, it's going to debilitate me and I won't be able to deal with it and I won't be able to focus and I won't be able to let go. I won't be able to have fun. Sometimes, like, I know that I can definitely be seen as very controlling and I can be controlling. I shouldn't say seen. I can be controlling. What I am is just give me a schedule. And if that schedule is yours 
and you tell me what it is and we agree to do whatever you want to do with this schedule, then I can do it. Like, that's fine. But, like, if nobody makes it, then I'm going to go crazy, so I will make the schedule. And a lot of times I find myself making decisions, making schedules, coming up with a routine, only because nobody else is doing it. And if nobody else does it, then I, I need to do it for my own mental health. And that's something that I hope people understand. I don't know if this is true with every autistic person. Maybe a lot of other people on the spectrum need it to be their way. They need to be the ones to make the decisions. What I care about is that a decision is made and that a schedule is put in place. And so a lot of times people don't pay, take up that slack. A lot of times people don't take that responsibility. So then in turn, I will take that responsibility. But I don't need to be the one. And honestly, a lot of times I hate being the person always having to decide. Like, I really don't want to be. I really just don't care a lot of times. And I'm like, I just want somebody else to make the decision. But since nobody else is, I'm going to have to for my own mental sake. I need to know what's going on. We need to have something that we're doing. And yeah, it's definitely very high maintenance. This makes me a very high maintenance person, a very controlling person. To other people, it seems it's very unyielding, not very good with the flow that kind of thing and yeah it's very true and it's very hard and do I hate it absolutely do I wish that I wasn't this way absolutely are there only negatives to this no I think that this gives me an extremely great work ethic I can do anything if it's on the schedule I can do it that's how I am and so I can be one of the best workers ever if you just give me the schedule. It can be the most packed schedule, nobody else would be able to have the work ethic to get it done, that kind of thing, but I can do it because you had it written down on a piece of paper, therefore I do it. And if you only give me a small amount of time, then I'll do it in that small amount of time. If you give me a big amount of time, then I'll do it in a big amount of time. I can do anything as long as you just give me the parameters for, for it, but it's hard because not always you get the parameters and you're kind of expected to just do things and pick them up on your own, but I don't know. I can't do that, and I think a lot of pe autistic people can relate to that scenario of like being at work and just being thrown in a scenario and be like, okay, just do it, and you're like, but what do I do exactly? Like, you need to tell me exactly what to do. And I think a lot of time managers or bosses are like, I don't just do it, and us as the autistic people are like, no, but like you need to tell me what to do. And if they just go, oh, do this, we go, okay, and we're happy to do it. We go and we're like, oh, okay, here we go, here we go, we do it whatever doesn't fucking matter what it is like I'll do a mindless task I don't care like it doesn't matter to me but I'll do I'll do it because you give me something to do and that's what I want I want something to do I want my schedule to be full having an empty schedule makes me feel like that Mr. Krabs meme as, even something as simple as I was planning on cleaning on Wednesday but now I have to clean on Thursday will make me feel like that Mr. Krabs meme. I can literally go into a meltdown because of something small like that. I think a lot of autistic people can relate to that. Schedules and autism is something that's not kind of a stereotype that goes with it. Like you think of just like social oddities. That's autism. But like one of the biggest things with autism is schedules, is routines, is patterns. Like those three words are huge to me. Schedule, routine, and patterns. That's how my brain works. That's how I function. That's what makes me be able to cope. That's what makes me be able to go and enjoy life is schedules. I find freedom through my routine, freedom through my schedule, um, because if I know what's going on, then I can relax and I can let go. But if I don't know what's going on, that's what creates anxiety, that's what creates fear. And I think that's why a lot of autistic people live in a constant state of fear and anxiety because of the unknown. That's my whole video on schedules and autism and like my personal experience literally it's just so funny because I don't know what I'm doing with these videos I'm just making a bunch of them I think I'm gonna post them during um, World Autism Week but I haven't mentioned that because I didn't think about that until the other day thanks for watching hopefully you got something out of this if you're neurotypical and you got to be able to understand people on the spectrum more and if you're somebody on the spectrum maybe you related to this maybe you feel like you're not alone maybe I helped you even figure out some coping strategies I don't know maybe I did nothing and I'm just rambling for a long time anyways Bye.